fishing hole. Grab your hat, get your pole. Let's go fishing when you're in the mood. Canadian Sport Fishing, brought to you in part by Rapala, premium fishing gear crafted from experience. Ducket Fishing, pro driven. Raymarine Electronics, Raymarine, simply superior. Pro Sports Boats, tame the water. Oh, what a hit. What a jump. He's coming right at the boat. Come on, come on over. Oh, right in front of me. Wow, that's a good sized bass. Oh no, oh no. He dove down. Oh good, he's off the bottom. This is awesome. You know, here at Richie's End of Trail, they've got a few lakes that you can go into. We had amazing walleye fishing. Brian Drysdale, the owner, and I. And then he went to the trouble of uh, getting a nice canoe that we put in the back of the truck. and. Uh, this aluminum boat was waiting on the lake. We were on this gorgeous lake all by ourselves. And he said, oh, there's some really big bass in there and some really nice pike. Two, three jumps and he's done. I'm gonna to try to get him around the front of the boat so I can land him over here. Look at what a gorgeous fish. My pliers are in the bag at the front. Hopefully I can get this guy. Don't shake, don't shake. Oh, look at, is that a nice smallmouth? Right here, that's actually heavy for me to hold <laughs> from Richie's end of trail. That's one thing about smallmouths. They are so aggressive. Good. No damage done. Now it's a matter of putting them in the water. Oh, man. He's so dark. Look at, look at those bars. Gorgeous fish. That is a gorgeous smallmouth. Look at. See if he arrives here. I want this guy to get even bigger here in northern Ontario. Man, northern Ontario has some awesome bass fishing. Look, one more look. There he goes. Now, this is a skitter prop. It's made by Rapala. You can see that propeller at the back. For some reason, small mouths love propellers. Now, see, it doesn't look like something coming off of shore. This is like a baitfish color. So it's got a white belly, dark back. When I pull it straight, this creates a lot of turbulence. It actually leaves a trail of bubble. When I jerk it, it looks like a baitfish that's struggling on the surface. You know, I love to bass fish. I love to fish both largemouth bass and smallmouth bass. Um, I find they're both very interesting and they have very different habits. Largemouth bass like to be in weedy areas, shallows, lily pads. Smallmouth bass can be in deep water. I mean, I get them in Lake Erie down 40, 50 feet in the Niagara River and other lakes that I fish in Northern Ontario. But one of my favorite ways to catch smallmouth bass is by casting topwater lures and especially on wilderness lakes where they can grow really large because there's not a lot of pressure. So this week we're traveling to Richie's End of Trail, which is located near Bisco, Ontario. It's about uh, three hours north of Sudbury, Ontario, or let's say seven hours north of the GTA in Southern Ontario. And right around Richie's, there are several lakes that if you make a special request, Brian Drysdale, the owner, can make arrangements. And there is an additional cost because they have to haul gear and have a person dedicate a vehicle to take you to these lakes and down the trails. When you get there, you can fish either out of a canoe or you can fish out of a small boat. And they have small um, outboard motors that they outfit you with. And the fishing is unbelievable. The hits on these fish when they hit the top water Come on, come over here. Oh, right beside the boat. Oh, again. They've got so much energy. Looks like I've only got, uh, he's gonna jump again. Beautiful. I don't think they've seen a lot of lures in here. That guy hit that uh, plug right at the front. He wanted it right in the head. So what I'm doing here, I'm letting this guy chill because I gotta grab it and he's got two trebles in the mouth. So I gotta be very careful. You're gonna jump again? I want you to be all done. And it's gonna be a quick peek, and uh, you're gonna be released right away. Okay, I think he's pretty well calmed down. This is the grab, so I gotta be very careful with that treble hook. You know, bass are so nice because you can grab them by the lower lip, but you gotta be careful if there's a treble hook in there. Okay. Oh man, he's like, look at this, he's kind of pinned. You know what? Uh, it's gonna be the under the belly. Look at how big this smallmouth is. 
Look it. He's got that front hook. Man, these are such healthy fish. Well, you look at that. Right here from Richie's End of Trail, in one of the many lakes that they go into. What a gorgeous fish. Look at how fat he is. You know, they call them sometimes bronze backs. This is like bronze everything. Okay, one last look. And I'm gonna put them in the water. They're so thick. Man, that's a thick fish. Okay, time to get him in the water. He's so beautiful. Man, I don't know how old these fish are. Look at the colors. Such great predators. He's ready, there he goes, look at it. I've gone to a different bait, so it's casting almost up on shore. This is called a chug bug. It's made by the Storm Lure Company. It has a lot of rattles, so it combines the rattles. And you know, when you get a chop on the water, the rattles help, and it's got this nice concave front, so it really pushes water. And one thing that I really like for hookups on fish, when it's sitting on the water, it doesn't sit like this on the surface. The back end hangs down like that. This week's adventure started by us having a nice breakfast in our cabin, and uh, we had to just uh, itemize our gear. I only took a couple of fishing rods with me, and only the tackle that I needed for the bass fishing. And um, Richie's has this beautiful barge where they have to haul a lot of gear, like customers' luggage, you know, or even outboard motors and fuel and so on. We took a really nice canoe that you can fit three people comfortably in and put it on the barge. From there, we took all our gear and they took us to the landing. From the landing, we put everything in the truck. And from there, we drove about, I'm guessing, uh, 20 kilometers to a laneway that I wouldn't even have noticed. And from there, we walked down about 200 yards to the lake. And this was a beautiful, isolated lake. It does get fished, I think, more by the locals, but not very often. And the bass can reach weights of over six pounds. So when you look at the lake, it's gorgeous. It's not too big. So if you have a full day to fish, you can probably fish the whole lake. Richie's does charge extra if you go to one of the lakes that are outside of Richie's end of trail where the lodge is on the main lake, but it's worth it, trust me. You can go into lakes for pike, you can go into bass, or also pike and bass together. So it's great here because if you get bored from catching 100 walleyes you know, in a few days, you can always do a trip out and get some big bass, maybe the biggest bass you've ever caught. Closed captioning is brought to you by K100. We make water burn. I made this cast with the top water just close to these rocks. And this guy nailed it. Oh, he's still head shaking. Oh, wow. Can't get over how much energy they have. I think he's made about three or four jumps already. They're such big, beautiful fish. I mean, they gotta be one of the hardest fighting fish in Canada in warm water. Oh man, he is hooked so lightly. I'm gonna try to swing him in here. I can just see he's just hooked barely by the tissue on his mouth here. Oh no, don't shake. He shook so much. Okay, got him. Oh man, look it. Is that a gorgeous bass? Here, let me see, eye to eye. You are a beautiful creature, yeah. I'm Italo, nice to meet you. Mrs. Bass? I think so. You know you fish too long when you start talking to the fish and you hear them answer, yes, I'm gonna let you go, okay? We just wanna get a nice picture of you. What a gorgeous bass. What a big fish. I, that fish might go six pounds. Look, it, it's not only covering my hand, it's going from my hand past my watch. So I don't know what the girth is, but that is one big, beautiful smallmouth. Come on, you weren't out very long. Go back, eat something big and nutritious, okay? Grow bigger. Look, come on, you gonna go? Beautiful. This is the extract pop, I'm holding it up in my hand. Um, I, it just big bloop bubbles, did you hear that? Bloop. That's why it's got that big concave front. It's actually wider, you know, it's got a bigger head, so it floats more, and again, it hangs down about that much into the water. What I did was cast right up to the rocks. And one way you can do that and really be accurate without hitting the rocks and exploding your lure is to use a bait casting outfit. So this is the outfit that I'm using right here. I've got, I think, 30 pound braid on it. The nice thing about a bait caster is that when you cast, and you cast pretty long, just before you get to your target, you slow the spool down with your thumb. The other thing that I like about the X-Wrap Pop, it has really nice hooks. Some hooks on certain lures are pretty wiry, flexible. This gotta be like a 1X strong treble, the front one. That fish just had one hook in that little tissue right here on the edge of the mouth. 
and it held. I know it was hooked better when I hooked it, because when I saw it coming out of the water, it had both hooks in its mouth. You know, funny thing is with smallmouth, I have had smallmouth that have had the hook on one side of its mouth over here, come out of the water, and the lure is hooked with the second hook on this side of its mouth. So no wonder you lose fish, even with uh, two treble hooks. You know, one of the things that I really like at Richie's End of Trail is that you're a little bit isolated, even though it's a drive-to location. So when you arrive at the landing, they transport you over to where the lodge buildings are. And uh, the accommodations are in the form of cabins. And to me, they're like trapper's cabins. They're uh, made out of log. There's no electricity. They're actually powered by propane. So they have like the Coleman lamps, you know, that you light up. There's a fridge and stove, everything that you need. Um, there is a separate shower building if you want to go shower. But what I like about it is that if you need Wi-Fi, you can go to the main lounge where the office is and they have Wi-Fi there that's very good if you need to call home or check on things and so on. But you know, to me, half the experience of being in the wilderness is getting away from it all. So if you're constantly bothered by devices that you have on, like cell phones or, you know, you need to do stuff, you're not gonna enjoy your trip. The wind's picked up, but this fishing is like, um, look at, unbelievable. The way these fish smash when they hit and then come out of the water. I'm gonna let the drag off a little bit, just in case he makes a fast run so the hook doesn't tear out. Tell you what, this is very exciting. You know, if you can see behind me, this is like a perfect lake for bass. I'm not sure why the bass are in here. Maybe the government stocked them but it's such a healthy bass population. And you know, when you get up north, most of the locals fish for walleye. They don't even really go for pike, or they might go for like speckled trout, brook trout, or lake trout, or ice fish for walleye. The bass are, are like hardly harassed by people. It's so nice, because if you love the bass fish, if you come up to Richie's end of trail, you can do this, you know, almost every day if you want, and still go out for a few hours after dinner and get enough walleye to have a nice meal. What a beautiful bass. That lure is so bright in its mouth. It's that bullfrog color. So this guy thought that was a frog. <laughs> it's funny. <laughs> this is one of the smallest bass. It's like four pounds. So they've been like five, six pounders. So what I'm trying to do with my fingers is just get on the bend of that hook. Oh, great. Look, and I just tagged them again here. There, there we go. Look, one more look before I release it. <sighs> That's an 18 inch smallmouth. The smallest fish so far. That's unbelievable. That water's nice. Look at, look at the colors. I'm looking at the span. The last one that I got was from my fingertips past my watch. Massive girth. This is a good four pound fish or even over. So healthy. I'm gonna just take my hand away, look at. Wow. This is one of the classic Rapala topwater lures. It's called the skitter pop. This one is the size seven, which means seven centimeters long. But the one thing that I'd like you to pay attention to, one is the color. So this is a frog color. So it's designed to be cast, you know, in the shallows, where there's reeds, along the rocks. But take note how small that popper is. It's not a big concave popper. So that, what that tells me is that it's gonna make a much lighter bloop sound. There's two reasons why I'm using the 20 pound test fluorocarbon leader. The first one is that they're pike here. I don't wanna lose like a 10 or $12 lure on a pike. The second one is that if I'm casting into the wind, the stiffness of the fluorocarbon compared to the braided line, there's less chance of the line getting caught on the hook when the lure is tumbling through the air. So even if I make a sloppy cast where I use my wrist, which you shouldn't, and that lure isn't going like this through the air, it's actually doing this, flying through the air like this, tumbling. There's less of a chance of the hooks catching the fluorocarbon because the fluorocarbon, look, it's got springy, it's much stiffer. So there's some two really good tips if you're using, especially top water and a lighter one. So this lure doesn't have any rattles. It's extremely light. It reminds me of like a, a number seven or number nine original floating Rapala. Raymarine Electronics, Raymarine, simply superior. You know, when you think of Northern Ontario, most people think of walleye fishing and pike fishing and trout, you know, but very few people think of big bass. And when you get to certain parts of Northern Ontario, there are a lot of smallmouth bass lakes and they do get quite a bit of pressure. What I like is that here at Richie's End of Trail, 
there are lakes that you can go into that very few people fish and the lakes are full of fish. Um, as a matter of fact, it's one of the places where I can experiment with topwater lures throughout the day. I'm not talking about fishing early in the morning and late in the evening. It can be bright sunny skies in the middle of the day. You can be casting topwater to rocky points and islands and shoals and you can get big largemouth up to six pounds to come up and blow up on them. It's a wonderful place. I wouldn't even think of keeping any of those fish because if you want fish for eating, you can keep walleye and pike, especially from the main lake here at Bisco. But uh, the experience of catching those big fish in that setting and you're the only person or you're the only group when you go to these lakes. So it's a really nice break from the walleye fishing that you do right where Richie's end of trail is. You know for a break we've been getting so many smallmouth in this lake with uh, top water. I thought I'd throw an next wrap out. I just saw fish break water there and I've got a nice decent sized pike here that hit the X-wrap. Oh! Jumped right out of the water and threw the hook. I love that. I saw fish bust water right there. I'm gonna see if I can get it to hit. I don't know if it was a bass or a pike. So what I'm gonna do is just work a slash bait for a little bit. Oh, he hit it. Is that a bass or a pike? This is really a pike bait because I've got an orange. Look, this is what I'm using. This is the color that I chose. It's like a gold color with that uh, orangey back. It's got a white belly. This is a, a famous lure, the extract from Arapala. It catches so many fish and pike love that color. But guess what? Small most do too. Okay, let's see if I can get a hook another one. Rod Runner Canada, grab and go fishing. You know, I've caught a lot of bass over the last 40 years and they're, especially smallmouth, they're great fighting and I've got the privilege of being 20 minutes away from Lake Erie, which is an amazing smallmouth bass fishery, Lake Simcoe in Southern Ontario. But I gotta tell you, when you get up here to Northern Ontario and some of the lakes that you can reach from Richie's end of trail, it's like it's a different breed of smallmouth. The smallmouth are dark, the smallmouth are thick, the smallmouth have a lot of power. When they hit, when they come out of the water, even a six pound fish will come out of the water four, five, six times. They'll do somersaults. They'll do tail walks along the surface. You gotta really make sure they're fought out before you plan on handling them. Because uh, if, if they're still thrashing and you're trying to land them with a lure that's got two or three trebles on there, you gotta be really careful. You don't wanna get stunned. <sighs> he was chasing at high speed. That's funny. I was just ripping this in because I was going to recast. And this smallmouth went berserk. Talk about a hungry bass. He hit that right like a pike or a muskie about six feet out from the boat. He had just a rear hook in his mouth. Now he's got the front one as well. This is nice. I can get comfortable here. Come on. Nice and easy. I'm going to try again picking it up by the leader. Uh, maybe by the lure. So you can do that sometimes. Look. So that's the one that he grabbed. Good, he's just hooked in the roof of the mouth. I've got my pliers handy. There, put that in there. Look, they are so healthy. Look at how chunky that fish is. Isn't that gorgeous? It's gonna extend them out, get them in the water. Look, beautiful colors. They are gorgeous here. Yeah, fly, fly. Twitch, twitch, real fast. Twitch, twitch, pause. Twitch, twitch. It's like kind of Morse code for bass and pike. Oh man, he's got me in those lily pads. Look at Oh, beautiful bass. Oh, sorry. Excuse my uh, loud voice. I get very excited when that happens. This is another huge smallmouth on a skitter pop. Oh, look how big. It's mammoth. I love it when they jump. Oh, wow, that was like a sailfish. There I go again, getting so excited. Man, this is amazing. Oh, <laughs> it's that like four times? This guy's got so much energy. This is, <laughs> I'm speechless. I might get a sore throat from uh, going with the loud wows. This guy's got so much energy. I've got one opening right here. Don't thrash, oh, don't thrash. <sighs> What a slap. Oh, 
Is that like a gorgeous fish? I have to get my composure. That is a big bass. Look, such a beautiful fish. Come on, there. Okay, now let me just put this down. Oh, look, is that a gorgeous fish or what? With that background? Oh, man, here. You deserve that. And I'm gonna gently lower him down. Oh, oh my goodness. What a slab. That's a 20, 21 inch fish. See if I can hold him up. I don't know, he's, he's ready to go. Turn him this way. Look, look how wide he is. Look it. Is that a gorgeous smallmouth from Northern Ontario? We're about three hours north of Sudbury, Ritchie's end of trail. Now, let me check that lure. Yeah, so th this is the skitter pop. It's a great lure, but the hooks are a little bit light, you know? And to be honest with you, this is for all round bass, like from one to let's say four pounds. That was like just over five pounds, I'm guessing. It's a great lure, but you know what? Those fish, when they hit, I mean, I have probably caught thousands of bass. It never gets tired. Like, I mean, when they come up like that and do that tail walk and slam the, the lure and zip down, and that guy took me into the lily pads, priceless. The other thing that I like about coming up the Riches End of Trail is that I can bring my pups. I've got River and Mulligan with me, and the owner, Brian Drysdale, has a beautiful dog. His name is Mumbo, and uh, he's in the boat. He was in the boat with us when we were walleye fishing. He didn't come on the small lake, and I didn't bring our dogs because we were limited for room. But the nice thing here is that they're dog friendly, and the dogs can run around, go swimming, and do everything. So it's actually perfect for a family getaway. And, uh, you know, whether you're a serious fisherman and uh, you want to look for a trophy smallmouth bass in one of the small lakes, or you just want to enjoy some nice fresh fish walleye meals, you can do that every day. And the nice thing is that you can just drive to it. It's about uh, seven hours from the GTA. You can trailer your boat or you can rent a boat. They have everything here, gas, a beautiful fish cleaning station. You can have a wonderful time in a wilderness setting and yet being still close to civilization. Canadian Sport Fishing, brought to you in part by Rapala, premium fishing gear crafted from experience. Ducket Fishing, pro-driven. Raymarine Electronics, Raymarine, simply superior. Pro Sports Boats, tame the waters. I'm amazed that they don't get off more. You can see that lure was in its mouth, now it's just tagged on the outside edge. It had that front hook in its mouth, and now it's just the back hook is somewhere there. So he's not hooked that well. Just trying to keep, I'm gonna let my drag off a little bit, because you can go on my reel. 